Canva just released a new feature called Canva Code and it lets anyone create simple interactive apps within minutes. No coding experience required. Most people think you need to be tech savvy or know how to code to create classroom tools like simulations and games. But this new update flips this idea on its head because now you can create interactive apps inside Canva with just prompting. I was lucky enough to get early access and test it out. I built a fully functional taboo game within Canva. In this video, I'm going to show you how Canva code works, how to build an interactive activity and things to think about before you get started. All right, so what's available at the moment? You can access Canva code by clicking on Canva AI and code for me. There are some ready-made prompts available for you. These are great for letting you see the level of detail you might need for your prompting. Some of these apps I wouldn't necessarily use for teaching and I'll talk a little bit more later in this video. With limited time, I'd be more critical about why I'm spending time to create a custom education app. Is it addressing a learning objective? But of course, if you're looking to have just creative fun and freedom, then go wild. For now, let's see how it all works. Let's click on this sorting activity. As you can see, the prompt is pre-filled and you just need to customize and click enter. Canva will then create the code for you. This is what it looks like after a minute or so of loading. Students would go in and sort the animals. You can edit the prompt however you like, for example, changing the level of difficulty or the topic. For example, we can say, make three levels of difficulty with 10 animals in each level. Adding customizations can help you cater to all your students' needs. When you're happy, you can then go ahead and share it to your students by publishing it as a website and then sharing the link. As with any Canva website, you can customize the appearance however you like. I also recommend adding written instructions for your students as well. Now let me show you my first Canva code app. For context, I like to use the game Taboo when I teach. It encourages students to practice their communication skills, new vocabulary words, and it just increases engagement in the class. The downfalls of using a taboo game is usually the preparation. So it means printing and cutting flashcards for all the students. So here's the digital version, which took about an hour of prompting and improving. I'm really impressed with how easy it was to do, and I'll have the prompt in the description below so you can copy it and edit it for yourself. In this game, a player from one team just hits start, and they'll have 60 seconds on the clock to give hints to the word um, without using any of the taboo words. If a student says a taboo word, then they lose their turn and it goes to the other team. The aim of the game is to have your team guess as many words as possible before the timer runs out. I think this is going to be less labor intensive and much more reusable in the future. So now let's break down things to consider before using Canva code. It takes time to ideate, prompt, and design the app that you want. So here are some things that you should think about before you create an education app for your class. Let's look at why you might want to use Canva code. If you have a specific use case in mind and it's simple and reusable, then this could be an opportunity to save you time in the future. Closely related is if you have customizations that you want to have in your app. This could be adding levels of difficulty or differentiated instructions to cater for your students. Next, your existing solutions might not be ideal. For example, they could be labor intensive or require physical materials unnecessarily. Games or simulations specific to your teaching concept are great because they might not be readily available or easily accessible for your students. Now for the other side of the table, when not to use Canva code. My personal take is that if there's already something out there that's doing what you want really well, then save your time and energy. For example, interactive quizzes are done really well these days. There are some with libraries that teachers have contributed to from around the world. There are some with AI integrated question generation, and most of them usually have teacher feedback reports that summarizes how the students went in your class. I wouldn't try to recreate that already amazing experience. Let me know in the comments if you want me to list a couple of quiz apps that I like. Along the same line, there are many simple apps out there that work really well. For example, flashcards, name pickers, and math games. Also, don't expect to be collecting student responses. Currently, Canva code works with simple HTML and CSS code, which is very basic in its functionality and serves more as that simple interface. 
I hope that this video has helped you. I love the fact that if you have an idea, you can really bring it to life with Canva code. Here's a summary of all the tips and considerations from this video. Stay connected to me by hitting the like and subscribe on this video. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are and what you plan on making with Canva code. To get inspired, there's also a Facebook community for teachers that you can join where you can ask questions and get news updates as well. If you're interested in learning more about how to use Canva AI as a teacher, then click this video here. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.